Okay, this is the in center and the in center uh, D right here is going to be created from the angle bisectors of a triangle. So from C to D, CD is the angle bisector, so I'm going to mark these two angles being congruent to each other. B to D is another angle bisector, so I'm going to mark these two angles as being congruent to each other. And A to D is another set of an angle bisector, so those two angles are congruent. Notice I put one mark, two marks, three marks, because I don't know they are congruent to each other. The in center has the known property of also being equidistant to the sides. So from D to F is the same distance as from D to E, and is also the same distance as D to G. There are little perpendicular markings, because the perpendicular markings tell you that you're measuring along the perpendicular segment from the side, so straight up from the side to the in center. So I'm going to add congruent marking. So this is congruent to this, is congruent to that. There are other markings on this diagram to point out. That there's an 8 right here for AG and a 10 right here for AD. So let's say I wanted to find uh, DG. Okay. Now there's no marking on DG. I just know that it's congruent to DE and congruent to DF. In order to do this, I'm going to have to use the Pythagorean theorem. The Pythagorean theorem applies to right triangles. So I'm going to use this right triangle right here. Okay, and to use the Pythagorean theorem. Hey, is it alright if I'm moving because it's dark today? which is a squared plus b squared equals c squared. a is going to be a leg of a right triangle, b is going to be a leg of a right triangle, and c is the hypotenuse. It's always the hypotenuse. And the hypotenuse is the longest side of a right triangle, and it's across from the right angle. I could add another right angle here because all perpendicular lines make four right angles, so there's a right angle right here. So in order to solve for the missing side, I'm going to put a little x on dg. So I don't know that side. So x is a leg, so I'm an, instead of having a squared, I'm going to write x squared. 8 is another leg, so I'm going to add, instead of b, I'm going to do 8 squared. And then c is the hypotenuse, so I'm going to fill that in with 10 squared. So now you solve this similar to other equations. So we're going to have x squared plus 64 equals 100. And then I would subtract 64 from both sides. So I get x squared equals 36. Now this you probably have not seen before. We have x squared equals 36. In order to get rid of a squared, you have to take the square root of both sides. So I'm going to take the square root of x squared, the square root of 36. The square root of x squared is just x. And the square root of 36 is plus or minus 6. It doesn't make any sense to have a negative side length. So x just equals 6. So if I want to find the length of dg, and I use temporarily the letter x for that length, dg is 6. Now you can notice on this side of the triangle, it would be 10, and it would be 6, so that would also be 8 if we figured that part out. But um, dc is not 10. We don't know from the in center that it's the same distance from the in center to the vertex, so be careful about which values you choose.